Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to give you a beginner's tutorial and review of the filmmaking app Pro Take, both the free version, which is called Auto, and the paid version, which is called Pro. Now this is available for both Android and iOS, so everyone gets to enjoy this. However, the paid version is a subscription service, but don't run away just yet. Their subscription fee for the first year is almost like a trial. It's £11.99 for that first year. If you carry on past the first year, it's £19.49 a year, which is less than half the price of Filmit Pro's £49.99 a year. This is the free version of Pro Take. And the first mode that you get out of two is called Auto. So on this screen, you can see in the top left, we've got resolution. So if we tap on that, we're currently on 4K, but you can also use 720p. You can also use 1080p. And of course, as I was on before, 4K. And you can also on the right hand side here, decrease and increase the megabits per second. And you can then just tap the screen to get rid of that. Next to resolution, you've got FPS, which is 25 frames per second at the moment. You've got six, 24, 25, and 30 frames per second available to you in the free version. On the right hand side, we're gonna ignore the ones that are slightly darkened out because that'll be in the pro version. In the play button here, you can see if we press on that, that gives you different files. So you can press files on the bottom right here. So you can select all of them if you want to delete all of them or export all of them, cancel that. And you can do the same for single files as well. Now at the top in the center, you've got the time code for your shot. Below it, you've got the name of the file. Now it's just a bunch of numbers at the moment. You can name it properly when you get the pro version. On the top left-hand side, you can favorite by pressing star on a file that you like and tap it again to turn it off. On the right of those three icons, you've got a thumbs down. So if it's a take you don't want to use, I personally would always just hit the delete button if that's the case, but you've got that if you want to. And you can also press green flag if it's something that you're not too sure about, but you want to check back later on. Here, you can export your files. So you can airdrop, Luma Fusion, the usual kind of places that you can send your files to. On the top right, you just press camera and that takes you back to your main screen. You've got a quick lens change here as well. So you're going from wide to ultra wide, very quick, very slick. On the bottom left, you've got your torch. So it's off currently. If you turn it on, you only get that brightness. So you can't slide it up and down to make that darker or brighter. You get on or off. You've got your audio bar on the bottom left, which is nicely laid out there, nice and small. Next to that, you've got your battery and your storage. So battery here is shown by a percentage, which is really good. It's really specific, which is super helpful. And below it, you've got your gigabytes of data left. Now, if you tap on the gigabytes of data, that then tells you how many minutes of filming you've got left as well, which is incredibly helpful to know. And if you look at that icon on the left of the time code, you press that. This then takes you to your monitor mode, which you can use for wireless video transmission. That is something that you'll be able to use a lot more of and in much more detail in the pro version. Now on the right of the time code, if you press this rule of thirds grid, you can look at aspect ratios. So you've got various aspect ratios here that you can use. You've got a safe area. So as you can see, if you look at the outsides of the image, as I go down, you'll see there's a frame that kind of shrinks in to the image. And what that's useful for is if you were to bring a character out to here, you wouldn't necessarily know that's gonna be out of frame completely, but then with these, you can show that the character needs to be more central, so that's gonna give you a better framing in post-production. Under others, you've got different framing tools. So if you press on thirds, you've got your rule of thirds grid here. You can tap that again to turn it off. You've got your crosshairs, so it's almost like a gun crosshair. And then you've got horizon. If you turn off crosshairs, you can see horizon more clearly. Now what's great about horizon is actually if you tilt the phone one way, it goes completely white and grayed out. That means you don't have a flat horizon on your image. Whereas when it goes yellow, you do have a flat horizon on your image. So that's a really useful tool to have actually, especially when you're filming outdoors on uneven grounds. Now, although some of these icons on the far right side are grayed out, you can still use them. So the top right hand side displays your brightness. So you can have it at max or normal. And then below that, you can zoom into full screen. So this actually is the whole of your phone screen being shown with the image. Two times in large display, which I would never use really. And then original ratio, which you start off with, with the app. So below that, you've got an icon here that gets rid of all of the icons. So if you tap that, you've got a completely clean screen to look at when you're filming, which is really handy. And if you press that again, that just brings them all back in an instant. Very easy, very quick. On the bottom right, you can change this whole layout into portrait and what's great about this as you can see is that all the icons line up exactly as they should do in portrait they don't stay sideways like they do with some apps and you just press that top left icon to go back into horizontal now on the top right here you've got selfie mode if you want to you can record in selfie mode then press that selfie mode button that you see here and then that will flip it so you're actually watching ahead of you so you can go back and forth in between selfie 
and back camera, selfie and back camera. It's a really useful tool actually. And I think a lot of people, particularly vloggers, will find this really interesting. Now when you press settings under record, you've got SDR 8-bit, you can change it to SDR 10-bit or HDR Dolby Vision. You can also have record beeper, which means when you hit record, it makes a beep sound. Record flash, which flashes at the beginning and end of a take. Volume record keys. You can also know by turning this on when your frames are dropped during a take. You can turn vertical video on or off. And stabilization, you've got off, standard, cinematic, which provides some latency, so there's a bit of a lag and delay in your footage to what you're seeing in real life. Extreme, which provides a high amount of latency as well. Swipe to the left and it brings up a few more options for you. High dynamic range imaging, you can have it auto or off. You can save your video in app, which is what I always do, or to camera roll, or to both. Your local flicker, so depending on your electricity frequency in the area you live in, you can keep it at 50 or 60 hertz. You've then got mirrored selfie, and then you've got performance mode, which says this mode will automatically turn off some features, i.e. waveform and other UIs, when the device's capabilities are reaching the limit, i.e. HDMI out, when recording HDR video to ensure the performance. Now, when it comes to focusing, you really only have this focus tool. Now, this is the same that you have with the iPhone native camera app, and I presume the same with the Android. So you can tap on different areas of the screen to give yourself different levels of focus. It's not the best thing, but if you want a free app, then this isn't too bad at all. Now, allow me to pay $11.99 for the first year of Pro Take, so you don't have to. Now, this is the screen for when you're using the Pro version of Pro Take. So this is the paid version on subscription. As you can see at the top, we don't only just have our resolution and frames per second options, but we also now have shutter speed, ISO, white balance and our lens picker. Now you can tap on each of these to adjust them. Now I have auto exposure on currently, but if I turn that off, I can choose shutter speeds of one over 100, one over 50, one over 25. And I can also change that by the dial on the bottom. And that changes, as you can see the wheel on the left-hand side as well. And you can tap the screen to come out of that. And then you've got your ISO. Tapping on that, you've got the dial here. Again, you've got auto exposure on the bottom left. You can turn on or off. I have that off. Bring that ISO as low as you possibly can to get the cleanest image tap screen to get rid of that. White balance, you can go auto white balance. You can record lock, which means that it will go auto white balance until you record and then it will lock it on record. You've then got presets. So you've got tungsten, fluorescent. You've got shade as well, which I quite like. I've never seen that on a phone before. So the shade white balance presets quite nice. Sunny and cloudy. You can also adjust the tint here as well. So what I like to do is go auto, then tap auto again, and that locks your white balance. Then the lens picker is, as you imagine, wide, ultra wide, and then you've got selfie. If you look to your left, we've got the wheel for shutter speed and ISO. So of course you can lower that and raise that. When you do touch on these wheels, they actually expand and you can do the same for ISO, of course, raising it and lowering it right down to where you want it. On the right hand side, you've got the focus and zoom wheel. So these work exactly as Filmic Pro does pretty much. Again, on Pro Take here, it expands when you touch it and then Focus works exactly the same way. Now it comes to one of the things that I actually find quite frustrating about this app and that is automatic focus pull. Now next to Will, you can see we've got B, which is grayed out. And the idea is that you move that to a focus point that you want to have that on and then tap on B and that means you've started your focus pull first point. You can then have it all the way down to zero, which is the closest you can bring the focus to, or up to the infinity sign, which looks like an eight, and that is the furthest away you can get the focus. Now, when you find the focus that you want, you simply let go of the wheel, and that now sets your automatic focus pull. That sounds simple enough, right? So you tap the A to B symbol here, and that starts your focus pull, nice and simple. However, there's no way on anywhere of this screen to change the speed of your focus pull. And if you want to set your focus pull, you can't then just use it again straight away in your next take. So you have to keep resetting that focus pull again and again and again. Now this I find really frustrating. As someone who wants to use lots of focus pulls, you really, really want to be able to use that focus pull again and again and again. So it's really frustrating that you can't do that. It's a little bit clunky and it's nowhere near as slick and as smooth and cohesive as the rest of the app, which is a bit of a shame. And you can do the same for zoom as well by creating different points of zoom to create basically a zoom in or a zoom out. Now something else that's been added to the bottom left here is your exposure tool. So you've got your waveform, you've got your parade histogram and RGB histogram. Now when you tap it again, that turns off, but it doesn't actually completely come off the screen. You can see above that as well, it says what you're filming, what codec, so H.265 and in 10 bit. 
Now next to Prey, you've got a square that's got sort of hatchings drawn across it. This is your video assistant. So if you press on that, you can now see we've got zebra stripes, false color, which I really love. The way it looks is just fantastic, like a real professional camera would. And you've got focus peaking as well to see exactly where your focus is. You can turn it on to auto. So when you move the focus, you can see the focus peaking changes as you move it around. So you can see exactly where your focus is peaking and then you can turn it off so you can just use it as and when you want to and then press the screen as usual to get rid of that. Now on the top left, there's some slightly faded images here. One of them being a smiley face with a plus sign next to it. If you press on that, it says that basically you need to be using this at 1080p or 720p up to 30 frames per second. So I go into settings, change to 8-bit and then change to 1080p. Now when I press on that face, I now have some different looks if I turn that on. So these are basically beauty filters. So if you're into more Instagrammy type things, you can change all of this. Now one of my favorite aspects is the film look packs that you get built into ProTake. You don't have to pay extra for it, although of course you are paying a subscription fee. But if you press on this rainbow circle at the top right of the screen, you then see that you're gonna get different looks for your image. So you've got log C. So if you wanted to do some color grading afterwards in post-production, you can see that we've got a nice desaturated image to give you more high dynamic range in the highlights and your shadows. You then got Alexa 709. You got vlog styles as well. A clean look, a faded look, pinky, sepia, retro. I quite like retro actually. I think that looks quite nice. I think that's something that I might want to use at some point. Interior. And now these are really nice looks. So this is a Kodak emulation film look. So this is really nice. You've got film emulation. So this is Kodak 5293. Now the numbers don't mean anything to me, but I absolutely love how this looks on camera. Now I wouldn't normally use a look that's baked into your footage. I'd rather do the grading in post-production so you've got more control. But these do look really, really nice when you're trying to emulate a Kodak look. And they've even tried to get a movie look that have been inspired by real movies. So you've got a Transformer look. You've got a look from the film Her, which I love that film. This is a really well done look. I really, really love that. That's excellent. Roma, Budapest. And you can increase the intensity of these as well. So you increase it and you can decrease it to nothing. You've then got the film Moonrise, that look from Moonrise, which is really nice as well. Saving Private Ryan, which looks really cool. And then you've got Alexa look. So you've got analog, teal and orange, orange for a warmer look, warm and winter. Another one of the big differences when you go to the pro mode of pro take is when you press settings in the top right here is you go to data and you've now got all these bits of data you can customize so that when you come back to your takes, you've got a different name, file numbers and all that kind of stuff for your organization of your shots. You can also turn your location on and off. I presume that will go into your files as well. And you can have time code off you can have it on free run, which means when you come in, it's got the time of day there. So it's constantly running at the real time of day. Record run, which just means that when you hit record, you've got the whole time running there as well. You can also create a preset. So once you've got a preset that you're happy with, you just hold on the plus sign and you can label your preset that you want. You can even create a barcode for your preset. So if you want to add this preset to another device that's using ProTake, you can do that, which is a really advanced, nice feature to have. Accessories. Now this is a really exciting part of ProTake. You can use ProTake app on the Zion gimbals. Now, I believe you can use this on the smooth gimbals, so the Zion Smooth 3, 4, and 5, but I'm not sure if you can use it on the hybrid gimbals like the Weeble S. That's something I'll have to try out, but I don't think you would be able to do that. It's probably more than likely just with the Zion Smooth gimbals that are smartphone specific. Now, one of my favorite things about using any smartphone filmmaking app is when you can use your anamorphic lens and it actually shows the anamorphic footage how it should be de-squeezed live in your camera, and you can get that exactly with the ProTake camera app. So if I turn this on, when I actually attach the anamorphic lens and turn on that adapter, we now have the de-squeezed anamorphic footage in shot. So then when we press record and press stop, but in Proto you absolutely have the ability to create anamorphic shots live in camera and you don't have to de-squeeze in post. We've also got the depth of field adapter as well, so you can use that. And what's nice in the app as well, when you go to ProTake Plus in the settings, it shows you when your expiration date is of your subscription, so you can cancel it just before it runs out if that's something you need to do as well. Now, something else that's really great in ProTake is you can use ProTake Focus, which is what you use when you're connecting with other devices, reversed wheel direction in your focus and zooming, HDMI clean feed. You can also use an HDMI clean feed. Now, if you press this left-hand side symbol next to the time code, you've now got the ability to use multiple devices for wireless transmission. And you can use up to four devices. Now, I haven't used this yet, but this is something I definitely want to get to grips with. You've got the camera you can use it as, and you can set an A, B, C, and D camera. 
you can use monitor mode so you can use that just as a second device being the monitor and on the display you can label it so it's for either the director to watch the director of photography a client if you're doing a corporate gig or others so any other type of person that might be watching also you can use different types of devices so you can use an android and mix that with an ios device you don't have to stick to ios only or android only you could film on an android phone and use iOS devices for the rest of your monitors and cameras. So when you press on Pro at the bottom right, you've then got the option to go dual, which is two cameras recording together. Those of you who use Filmic Pro will understand exactly what this is all about. So now you can see me and the image ahead of me, which is really cool. And you can alter this how it looks. So if I press on the layout at the top left here, it's got files, wide and selfie. If I tap on that, I can change this. So it splits so they're joint side by side. You can also use these arrows so you can make one image bigger and the other one smaller, which is a really, really nice touch. It's not something I've ever thought I'd ever need, but actually when you're doing a tutorial, this could be really, really helpful. You can change to different lenses and you can do picture in picture as well. And whilst you're doing picture in picture, you can also change the size of the smaller image. So for example, if I press these arrows, I can drag it out up to this big. So maybe I'm here and I'm talking to you about what I'm looking at, and then you can bring this down to its smallest image as well. So it's actually pretty advanced when you look at this and see how it all works together seamlessly. And it's really, really smooth and instant. Every time you press for a different mode, it works really, really smoothly. So it's a massive thumbs up from me for ProTake on their picture and picture and side-by-side -side image and split. It works really smoothly, it's very seamless. And I have to say, I'm really, really impressed that this is all in one app. And you have to dive into other apps like Filmic Pro, this is all in one place it makes it a lot quicker and a much more slick experience. And then to come out of dual mode, you just press on dual and you can go straight back into pro mode. Now you'll notice whilst I'm using the focus here on the pro take and also the exposure wheel, so the shutter speed and ISO levels here, in the middle of the screen, you don't actually have any reticules whatsoever for your focus and exposure. Unlike Filmic Pro where you have a reticule in the middle and an exposure and beast cam, with ProTake, you don't have any reticules whatsoever. You only have the wheels for your controls. It's also important to mention that the free version is not too bad either. You don't get a huge amount with it, to be honest. It's more like a teaser for the pro version of ProTake. But if you're a vlogger and you just want something that can give you some basic controls and a few little extra bells and whistles, then it's very good for vlogging as well. One of my favorite things about the ProTake app is it's extremely intuitive. The UI is really nicely laid out. When you press on various features, it just happens instantly and it is very, very quick to use and very accessible. Something else that's really important about this app as well is that it is regularly updated. I mean, it should be given that you're paying a subscription fee, absolutely should be regularly updated, but it's good to know when you go onto the app store that they do update it all the time. Now, one of my favorite features of this app as well is the Log C Gamma Curve. It's a genuine log curve that matches your phone's coloring to the industry standard Alexa Log C. So it can give you really amazing detail and higher dynamic range in the shadows and highlights to a professional level. I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into that. I was Googling and looking on social media platforms for an hour. There is no social media profiles for this company. It is absolutely ridiculous. There's no way to contact them. The only way I think you could is maybe by leaving a review and asking questions there on their app store page. But it's actually ridiculous that it is so impossible to get any kind of information out of this company about the app. And due to their lack of communication with customers, it does mean that if there's features in this app, which I've found looking through this, that I don't understand or you might not understand, you're just not gonna find out unless someone who's made it has got it or someone who's extremely experienced with this app is gonna know every detail of this app. The snowball effect of that is, is that there's very few tutorials out there for this app. This is one of the only few that have been made and the company themselves don't make tutorials either. So if there's any functions that you don't know, Good luck to you on finding out from ProTate themselves. Pro version, there's bizarrely no reticules whatsoever. So it makes it really difficult to get focus clean and clear without using one of the focus peaking tools, which is a little bit frustrating to say the least. Also during the pro mode, there's no way of switching from selfie camera to back camera. So if you want to do vlogging, you may as well just stick with the free version. So if a subscription model really isn't for you and you don't want to be paying a regular amount of money for an app, then check out my last video on Beastcam. It's a very cheap app, a one-off purchase, and it really doesn't disappoint if all you're looking is for manual controls and a good professional filmmaking app.